In this video we will be discussing the price to earnings ratio, also known as the P.E. ratio. It is one of the most widely used valuation metrics and is commonly referred to as an earnings multiple. The P.E. ratio compares a company's price per share to its earnings per share, or EPS. Let's break down the two components of the ratio with an example. First, the price per share. To find the price per share, you can simply go to any finance website or brokerage to find the latest quote. Or even better, you can use the Alpha Vantage API. You can see here that the latest quote for a Costco share is $478.73. We will take this number and plug it into the numerator of our equation. Now let's find Costco's earnings per share. To calculate it, you take Costco's net income from the last 12 months and divide it by the average number of shares outstanding during that time. Or you can head back to your financial website of choice and pull it directly. Once we plug our EPS number into the equation, we have our final ratio to calculate Costco's PE, which is 37.7. Now let's talk about what this number means. Simply put, for every $1 of profit that Costco generates in a year, you'll need to invest $37.70. Investors use and compare P.E. ratios to determine when a stock could be undervalued or overvalued. A company's P.E. is typically benchmarked against the rest of the industry they operate in or against the entire market, such as the S&P 500 index. So let's take a look at Costco's closest competitors including BJ's Wholesale, Walmart, Target, and Kroger. They each trade at different P.E. ratios. When comparing straight across, Target looks undervalued as it is trading at the lowest P.E. ratio, while Costco looks overvalued as it is trading at the highest. Does that mean you should sell Costco and buy Target? Not necessarily. The market is also pricing future expectations into the valuations, including a company's expected growth. As you can see here, analysts are expecting Costco to grow 15.1% this year while Target is only expected to grow 2.1%. This could begin to explain why Costco trades at a higher P than Target. As you just heard, the P-E ratio has its limitations. Like any fundamental valuation metric, it doesn't tell the full story, such as the growth prospects of the company. Another limitation of the P-E ratio is attempting to compare the metric across different industries. Companies in each sector have unique business models and are affected by macroeconomic forces in contrasting ways. Because of that, comparing P-E ratios of companies in different sectors is not recommended. For example, comparing the ratio of a technology company to that of an energy company. Instead, P-E ratios are typically used to compare companies inside the same industry. For example, comparing the P-E ratio of Meta to that of other technology companies such as Netflix, Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Adobe. That wraps up this video on the price to earnings ratio. Be sure to check out the rest of our channel for more educational videos on finance.